Okay, so we've covered trust, cooperation, and fairness. But you may be asking, well, so what? You've got some cute little stories about prices at 2.1 times the price instead of two times the price, all these kind of things. What do we get from all this trust, cooperation, and fairness matters, right? Economics shows us that more is preferred to less and that people optimize. Well, economics does show us that we optimize, but what if behavioral economics is pointing something out to us? Pointing out that our standard neoclassical utility function is just missing some elements of trust, cooperation, or fairness, right? What if we could save neoclassical economics and the utility functions within it, that approach, and we could model man, but model man with these other elements? just put in other regarding behavior into the function. We could avoid the hyper-rational, purely egoistic homo economicus, and yet still use the really powerful neoclassical economic tools, but without that purely egoistic approach, and instead with some elements of trust, cooperation, or fairness, right? It's no kidding that we're not all hedonistic, egoistic, other disregarding jerks. Maybe we have other egalitarian or fairness utility functions that could represent how we actually behave. And so we're going to look at a couple of these uh, elements to see, right, what other kind of utility functions can we create that could perhaps save the neoclassical model by showing that we do have these elements of trust, cooperation, and fairness. All right, so just to briefly overview these, we want to start with this, the kind of, uh, you know, neoclassical framework, and we're going to look at the purely egoistic, just, hey, we're just purely out for ourselves, right? And what we're going to say is that there's a utility function that is represented, and, and we are impacted by the payoffs to person X or the person Y, and our utility function in a purely egoistic world is equal to X uh, to the one-half power is what we have here. That would just show some basic risk aversion. So you notice that Y, the payoff to Y, doesn't matter at all to this individual. So this would be our setup for the egoistic individual, the purely hyper-rational, hedonistic, egoistic, just pure selfish individual that is the neoclassical man. This is going to be in contrast to social preference theories that have other regarding utility functions like this altruistic one shown here. Others' attainments are also a part of your utility function. You're not just concerned with the payoffs to yourself, X, you're also concerned with the payoffs to others, Y, right? So here, the altruistic payoff, what do we have? We have, well, uh, you know, X's payoff, my payoff, you know, it matters, and it matters more than your payoff, Y's payoff. So we have 0.6 multiplied by our X, and then again, to the one half power showing some risk aversion, and then only, that's plus only 0.4 your payoff, right? And so I want you to benefit, but I do care a little bit more about me. Nonetheless, I'm altruistic. Any payoff to you is a positive to me. We could look at a utilitarian uh, utility function here. Again, this is a social preference function where Y's payoff also matters. And this is purely utilitarian where, hey, this, you know, you matter just as much as I matter. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and maximize the total utility between the two of us, right? And so both of us are risk averse and there is no discounting. I'm not just a little bit altruistic. I'm purely utilitarian in this setting. Another social preference function we could look at would be an inequality averse social preference function. Right. And here what happens is that agents would maximize this equation here. Any difference between X and Y creates a larger negative number and thus is worse off. Right. It creates a bad outcome for us. So we just want our two payoffs to be as equal as possible. We're inequality averse. If X is somehow larger than Y or Y is somehow larger than X, that's a bad thing. We want to get those two numbers as close to each other as possible. We, we you know, go through, we end up taking the absolute value of this and then having it be a negative number so that the we're worse off the bigger that absolute value of that difference actually is in this setting. Here's a Rawlsian utility function. Right? where what we do is we maximize this equation. We're trying to maximize the minimum here. Right, So you're trying to maximize the minimum of either X or Y. 
So what we do is we take the minimum of X or Y with our risk aversion kind of built in there, that's to the one half power, right? We say, whichever one of those is lowest, that's the payoff that matters. And then what we wanna do is we wanna have the highest outcome, the highest utility possible. Uh, and that's what this Rawlsian utility function would be, right? So John Rawls uh, kind of famous for this uh, uh, approach where what we're concerned with is the least among us, right? Our concern is we wanna make the least among us as happy as possible or have as high of payoffs as possible. Another one we could consider here is that we have this equally envious uh, uh, payoff here, right? And so this one's a little more pernicious here. Uh, I get some payoff X, you know, to the one half power because I'm risk averse. And then what happens is that's minus any payoff that you are receiving player Y. So the higher that Y's payoff goes, the less utility that I player X actually get here. Uh, so there's this element of envy here. So this is kind of a negative social preference function where we don't want the others to be advantaged. But you could see here, you know, how we could create different types of utility functions to engage kind of this social interaction and our preference towards other people's payoffs. All right, guys, so up next, what we're going to do is we're going to try and bring all of this material together. We're going to provide some critiques for the social preferences utility function approach that we just, just showed. And so if you guys want to continue on in the lecture series, click right over here on the video and you'll be taken to the next part.